born and raised in a in an environment which was after the partition of India, and, since, uh -huh. and it was a kind of uh, in terms of interfaith an isolated situation, yeah. where the only presence of the religious other was the Christian colleagues of my father, and they were usually either secular people or uh, lapsed Christians. So there was no actual presence of the religious other and there was no question of interfaith friendships. The first, the initial level of friendship if we talk, if we take Elon's models, five dimensional models, was when I entered into the formal Christian college for my higher education, which was a Christian missionary college and we have a lot of Christian students and colleagues. But that friendship or some of the friendships were on the basic level of just social interaction or getting through the educational system. You mean you, ne you never spoke, sp spoke about uh, religion? No, no. But we had good friendships. But it was just like a business friendship or uh, school, school, classroom friendship. That was all. And uh, it, it can't be called properly interfaith friendship. And there was uh, the, the, the Christian, uh, uh, well, practical Christian or secular Christian? Uh, bo both kinds. Both kinds. So some of them were religious boys and some were just lukewarm, like uh, in uh, every society, practicing, semi-practicing, non-practicing. And the practicing never ask you what's your religion, how do you... Of course they do, they, they did, but they, they knew I'm a Muslim, I knew that they, were, they are Christians, yes. that they have, we had go, good cordial relations, uh, respect for each other, but it's not, strictly speaking, an interfaith friendship, okay. because we did not share common ideals, a common spirituality, a shared spirituality, or an affinity, because if I define friendship, from which interfaith friendship flows out, friendship is affinity between two persons and this affinity or complementarity, it comes out of a shared ideal or a shared spirituality or a shared level of spirituality which was all not there at the moment. So uh, my life went on and uh, What I, say, what I said that it's all intellectual was that I rediscovered my tradition in a deeper sense, in a profound sense, through the works of the French metaphysician René Guénon, who settled in uh, Egypt and uh, is known by the name of Abdul Wahid Yahya. Through his books, I rediscovered my tradition and then, and also the universalist perspective on religion and then my entry into spiritual life. And it was practically interfaith friendships did not take place in my case until I started participating in three major initiatives of uh, interfaith dialogue. First of these was SSR, Society for Scriptural Reasoning, where Jews, Christians and Muslims come together and study their scriptures on a selected theme every year through selections of all three scriptures in small groups and then a plenary. It was there that I encountered representatives of the other traditions who had an affinity with me in the sense that they were fellow travelers on the same path. They were scholars and they had spiritual inclinations or they were practicing spiritual people. And thoroughly grounded in their own traditions, in their scripture, in love with their scripture, traveling on a spiritual path and dedicated life to God. Mm -hmm. And there I encountered, first for the first time, Jews and Christians who, with whom I felt an affinity, just because on the basis of a shared ideal, a shared spirituality. So this affinity gave me spiritual friendship, uh, interfaith friendships for the first time. And we developed that over the years. Then Cambridge Interfaith Program 
then in other initiatives like building bridges like one word or common word so th these were and when i now i when i look at interfaith friendships it gives me an opportunity firstly of gaining information about the religious elder and the tradition secondly to dispel such certain misgivings that we gather from our socializing or the environment which we live in and most importantly when i encounter appreciable or even a dazzling example of the same of the embodiment of same principles values and spiritual aspirations for which my tradition stands for in an other or i find that some aspects of thought or practice that have been eclipsed or slightly relegated marginalized in my society in my tradition are very prominent in the other for example for example if you say the social uh, uh, charity if i see that in a christian friend this there is an overwhelming uh, drive for charity to help others which is somehow neglected in in my environment that gives me an an invitation to do more mm -hmm. to learn and not to forget this very essential thing or for example another very important virtue in human in, in spiritual life is humility if another friend from another another tradition is a walking example of true humility that gives me reminds me of something that this is a very basic human virtue which i should have cultivated to that extent or remembering god in vocation very often always in uh, remembering remembrance of god or worship acts of worship frequent so th these are all positive things and then it serves a deeper purpose for me these interfaith encounters and friendships to it reminds me of the basic quranic insight on diversity of religion of multiplicity of religion why so many religions in this uh, world why god sp spoke again and again to humanity and in different forms that the absolute is never exhausted by any of its manifestations it's the richness and all possibility of the principle of the absolute that there are so many possibilities diversity which are addressed to the ethnic diversity and geographical expanse of humanity in which it has been for uh, several thousands of years and according according to the quranic insight which interfaith friendships always remind me and keep it fresh in my memory is that this is a symbol this is a manifestation of what god had said in 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 the quran that for every one of you we have appointed a law and a way if god had will he could have made you one but he did not so try to compete with each other in good works and remember that in which where you differ when you come back to us return to us all these things would be explained to you because he is wise and he is all knowing so if this situation of multiplicity of diversity of religions is a divinely ordained situation i am obliged and through interfaith friendships i am given an opportunity to celebrate this richness this all possibility of the divine otherwise 
this would be all uh, a monolithic thing. Mon thing. Monotonous. Mon monotonous <laughs> thing or uh, a single colored thing. So this is divine will that there, there should be diversity. And it is uh, one of the very great symbols of the divine, of the sacred. That so I celebrate it, not tolerate, but celebrate it as a divine symbol. And, as, and, and, and I am always grateful that this opportunity is given to me through interfaith uh, friendships. And it brings me out of my as isolation as well. And in, according to the Quranic uh, advice, invites me to a healthy competition in good works and good character traits. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're well, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Your English is so good, also. My Something is very interesting in, in your in your testimonies. It's a friendship with someone you never met, but you, you wrote the, the the books, and I think that it's a, it's a, it's a way of also of a friendship with sense and uh, it's also friendship it is friendship and it's a very uh, important aspect in my personal case I, I just as i just explained that my spiritual journey or intellectual journey was through somebody who i, I had never met but it was through his books but there is a deeper aspect to it as well that uh, which i would like to narrate through an anecdote that a great scholar of history and biography, or rather hagiography, of the early saints and companions of Islam was once asked, where were you tonight, last night? He said, I was in the company of the companions of the Prophet. Said, How come? Well, because I was reading and writing about their lives and how they lived out their lives in devotion to God in total dedication, in worship, in remembering God. So in a sense, I was with them, yeah. in their company. Yeah, you can feel the presence of the people. Of I, the exactly, of, exactly. Yeah. There's a presence which radiates, not only from a living person, but from, it, it, it equally radiates from those who, have, who are not with us at the moment, but their spiritual presence, their work, and their scholarship in, in, in some cases radiates through time and beyond. So we can be inspired by the, the sense and the books of all this other religion and it is also a sort of friendship. It is a sort of friendship and a source of inspiration that if you have not met personally through the books or through the influence because there is another channel of grace which works imperceptibly, mm -hmm. invisibly, but it's as real as meeting you and me. Thank you. <laughs> that was a good point. <laughs> a new point that we didn't. A new angle.